guys, welcome back to the Wall Street Bull. Anthony here. I hope you're all doing well and staying positive out there. It is never a dull and boring moment in crypto finance or the stock market. That is why I love doing daily market updates. Now today, there are a significant amount of liquidations that are taking place as we speak. Uh, just watching the Bitcoin slash USDT pair at the moment. Wow, there was a big flash crash that happened this afternoon. Full on, but we're still managing to hold these positions, believe it or not, on Bybit. Very, very interesting. Anyway, we're going to get into the video. There is a lot happening in the crypto world, as everyone knows. We're going, we've caught the flash crash that just happened literally 45 minutes ago at the time of recording, and it's now uh, 5.30 in the afternoon here in Melbourne, which is crazy. And we're going to get into that as well. Ripple and XRP, I should say, they're two separate things, uh, is expected to rise 200%, bullish as anything. There were uh, a significant amount of XRP tokens released from escrow. Telegram launching Toncoin payments, which is interesting. Crypto.com is also going to launch retail trading services in South Korea. Uh, and again, there have been a significant uh, amount of flows in and out of Bitcoin ETFs as well. well. What is going on with the Ethereum ETF as well? It's going to be fascinating. And I believe Michael Saylor just bought a lot of Ethereum and the Bitcoin halving is only 16 days away. Going to go over my three commerce trading bots now on Bybit. And it's very, very interesting. You don't want to miss this. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video. Let's get into it, ladies and gentlemen. Massive shout out and thank you to every single one of you who have subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. If you are new, make sure you smash the subscribe button down there. Turn on that little bell notification as well, because as you can see right here on the screen, I absolutely love documenting my journey with investing with cryptos, dividend stocks, growth stocks, talking about passive income, building financial freedom. And of course, my goal at the end of the day is to build generational wealth. So come along this incredible journey. Things are getting freaking wild in this space. Also, if you can give this video a thumbs up, watch it straight through, would really help me push this channel out to a lot more people because the YouTube algorithm is absolute magic when you find ladies and gentlemen do that, all right? So make sure you give it a good thumbs up. It doesn't cost you anything. It is down there. Thank you very much. You guys rock. Also, a little disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own research and due diligence with this stuff, all right? Formalities are out of the way. I am going to sip on this espresso. Literally, literally trying to lay off the Red Bulls because, you know, they just are not good for you. Anyway... Community tab, 66,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. I should say 66,600 subscribers. Absolutely wild. Thank you very much to every single one of you. You guys absolutely rock. I really appreciate you guys watching my content. Top altcoins in the portfolio. We had XVG, uh, Digibyte. We had BTT, uh, Reserve Rights and Anchor Protocol. Some alts that are up uh, you know, earlier today anyway because the market's been flatlining because somebody's selling off a lot of bitcoin today anyway we're going to go to coin market cap we got 2.5 trillion dollars in the total at the moment we're up 6.98 percent which is interesting there is 119 billion dollars in volume again this needs to get back up to the 130 150 uh billion dollar level th for things to literally get crazy 52 percent bitcoin dominance which is nice 79 on the fear and greed index now again going to the top old coins and look at this i mean Slowly, we're creeping back up, but there's been like massive liquidations in the last, you know, six hours. Crazy. Bitcoin sitting at 66,000 US dollars today. Ethereum's at $3,379. And uh, there's just been a massive amount of liquidations today. Solana's down to 185 US dollars. Not worried about any of this, by the way. 60 US cents for XRP. Cardano's at 59 cents. Toncoin, 5.17. Not moving, but I mean, it's you know crept up there to a position 11 on the uh, total crypto market cap, which is very interesting. Uh, now we've got Chainlink $11 as well. Maddox at 91 cents. ICP $17. I was dollar cost averaging into this, guys. Well and truly above this level. Uh, let's have a look. Immutable X at $2.70. There are some incredible buying opportunities today. And uh, it's not financial advice. XLM is at 13 cents. We have Hedera at 10 cents. Uh, VChain back below. Four cents. This thing is really annoying. <laughs> what do you do? I mean, it is what it is. I'm still bullish on the project. Sorry. Optimism is at $3.28. I am bullish on the project. Casper is at 12 cents. Sui at $1.85. We got Algrain at 24 cents. 
uh, CFX 38 cents, AGIX, I do have a significant position to open up on Bybit with this one. Uh, 1,000 USDT, so I'm, I'm just going to see where this one goes. That's that's a lot of money. Uh, anyway, so uh, we'll see how this goes. The market is creeping back up slowly. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Flare is at $0.03. Cents. Now, there is something very interesting with Flare and the staking of Flare. I'm going to be looking into in detail. Uh, a friend of mine at Wave Innovation uh, literally brought this up to my attention, and it's ridiculous. The amount of money someone's making from this, or I should say a few individuals are making from this, is crazy so stay tuned for that uh when i've done a bit more research into it world coin seven dollars which again i'm still bullish on and iota at 31 cents and yes xdc i'm bullish on xyo and reef i have had a lot of people tell me about reef and want me to do videos on it guys firstly i don't get paid to promote any of these crypto projects i have not done that I'm not your typical youtuber that's for sure uh but i am bullish on reef I have been for a very long time and uh, it's, you know, it hasn't done really well to be quite honest with you. But in my opinion, it's in the pennies, long-term hold and uh, incredible, uh, you know, with regards to decentralized finance. And more importantly, I love the fact that uh, the founder of Reef called out Sam Bankman-Fried's bullshit uh, years ago and nobody listened to him. And uh, anyway, I think his name is Denko Machensky. Is, is that correct? Let me just have a look at community. Uh, I should say, I can't remember his name. Forgive me. Anyway, very bullish on Reef and of course, XY, XDC, et cetera. But anyway, moving on, let's go to Crypto Bubbles. And before I do, I do have the Wall Street Bull Patreon linked below. We are currently sitting at 908 members, uh, which is absolutely incredible. Thank you to all of you. Some of you guys are paid members. Some of you are just free subscribers. It doesn't matter. Join up to the Wall Street Bull University. It's linked below in the video description. I've been posting up there literally all night and uh, today as well. It's an incredible community. I put up a lot of information here with regards to my buys, my sells, my trades, my indicators, my full setup guides uh, to uh, three commas. And on now on Bybit, uh, you can copy all of the bots that I've got running. Literally just copy and paste. It's incredible, guys. Go join up to there. And again, my dividend investing as well. I did put up my dividend stock purchases because I do that every single week. And that's going to be generational wealth that obviously will be handed down to uh, my daughter one day. So this is bullish stuff. 1,886 posts. That is a lot of information. Go join up. And you can speak to me in the chat feature and you can speak to everyone else. It's just a really good place to speak to people and get you know questions answered. I found that uh, you know the previous bull market, there was just... There were groups like that, uh, but again, it was just all over the place, and it's so much better than Discord because, I mean, when you're in Discord, you've got like twenty or 30,000 people just posting so much crap. Anyway, go join up. I've kept it at uh, 5 US dollars a month. That's $8.50 Australian. It's absolutely nothing. Go join up. That link is below. Having a look at three commas now again, I've got a significant amount of bots set up. No BS, okay? Uh, I do have a short bot set up now with uh, trading all the futures on Bybit. Long as well, both on 10X. Now again, I do not recommend trading with leverage. It's extremely risky. If And uh, if you're an emotional trader, just don't freaking do it, all right? It's crazy. Never invest anything more than you can afford to lose also because you can lose money like that. Prime example today when we've had a flash crash, okay? Now I've got many multiple uh, single pairs trading on USDT on 15X leverage. And uh, guys, this software is incredible. Uh, I've been using my game for two and a half years and I've been really bullish on it for the last now uh, nearly 12 months coming up this month. So go join up. The link is below. You will get a discount if you use that link of, uh, I believe it's 10% off the monthly and 25% off the yearly subscription as well. It's completely up to you. But honestly, I, the gains that I've seen have been insane. Quick sip of the aqua. Anyway. You can literally copy all of the setups uh, that I've got on uh, three commas on Bybit. Now, moving to Bybit, uh, again, this exchange is incredible. I'm still getting used to it because I had to make the transition from OKX to Bybit because of the regulatory uh, constraints that OKX uh, encountered when they uh, essentially opened it up uh, an office here in Australia. And no hate, they are uh, still a partner of my channel as well, but I'm obviously trading with leverage on Bybit. Now, again... Everything is linked in the Patreon. You can see here I've currently got 51 positions opened up with 59 orders currently in play. Uh, now, the interesting thing about Bybit, now, if this had been on OKX, there would have been liquidations left, right, and center. And don't get me wrong, there have been liquidations today because of the flash crash. Uh, but the, uh, what's it called? The um, 
the maintenance margin I've been keeping a very close eye on. And you can see in the top right hand corner here, currently sitting at 29%. And if this were to get up to, you know, I believe it's around 70 to 100%, well, you're going to get liquidated. This is just what happens. Now, uh, it's been holding quite strong and these positions definitely would have been liquidated today on OKX. So it's a different platform. I'm very bullish on it. The referral link below is for Bybit. Go get all of these subscriptions if you wish. It's up to you, but it's been working really nicely. Anyway, let's move on to the news. Now, crypto bubbles, and let's have a look on the hour. We're back on the green uh, bubbles right here, which is nice to see that. You can see the sea of red today. Uh, and the only one that's in the green at the moment is Tau and Core. I don't invest in any of these, but that's up 30% today, which is crazy. And uh, Solana, again, still up 803%. It's down 6% today, 5 on the week. This, to me, is when I like to dollar cost average into my cryptos, right? I don't like to buy at the top of the market. And this is why a lot of people thought crypto was a scam. Because during the peak of the previous bull market, they bought it literally at the top and watched everything collapse. This is the ideal time. We're only a very few short days away from the Bitcoin halving. And uh, things are going to get pretty crazy. Now, moving on. The flash crash. 5%. Flash crash leads to $165 million of leveraged crypto le liquidations today alone. This is crazy. I'm watching it on my charts at the moment. But leveraged traders are nursing losses over $165 million as the price of Bitcoin tumbled 5%, literally in an hour. And uh, that's going to hurt a lot of people. And uh, don't get me wrong, there were a few liquidations today with me, but it is what it is. That's part of the game. Anyway, we move on. Now, Bitcoin's currently trading at 67,000 US dollars at the moment. We're slowly creeping our way back up in the green. And uh, my maintenance margin on Bybit's creeping back uh, to a lower level, which is actually really nice. So that's what's happened today. And there is a, a very interesting reason to what happened today. And we're going to get to that on X. Someone, I think it's Ash Crypto put that up. So we're going to have a look at that as well. XRP is forecasted to rise 200%. And uh, I would love that. And I'm sure a lot of you would as well. But Ripple's native cryptocurrency XRP is currently trading at 59 cents price range with the charts on Tuesday. That is today. Uh, and of course, this leading altcoin going downhill in April as it dipped to uh, nearly 8% in the last seven days. Uh, the broader crypto market is facing corrections as well after rallying hard in March, which we you know, basically saw insane uh, all-time highs being broken and the upcoming bitcoin halving event is what uh, led to bitcoin and xrp prices surge in the charge this year and uh, for the un uninitiated the bitcoin halving event will cut its bitcoin supply in half making the cryptocurrency scarcely available in the market and the development will help push bitcoin's price further up as the demand more of the supply is less and the bitcoin halving is scheduled to take place on april 20th 2024 we're not that far away. And if XRP price surges 200%, bring it on. Now, yes, XRP, I should say Ripple, unlocked 500 million coins uh, from the escrow, valued at $300 million, which, again, I'm not even worried about. But what makes the release particularly noteworthy is that it deviates from the usual practice of Ripple initiating such unlocks. Instead, it was carried out by an unknown address, aiding, oh, sorry, adding an air and mystery around the situation but this has been happening for a very long time i'm not even worried about that uh now we've got telegram for those of you who use telegram it's pretty cool uh launches toncoin payments for ads uh, and shares revenue with channel owners which is bullish and again toncoin for ad buys promising 50 percent revenue share for channel owners and has now enabled pay enable payments for toncoin uh, with toncoin for ad purchases on its platform offering a new way for channel owners to earn their content which is nice there's nothing wrong with that creators need to earn an income now crypto.com not that i'm i you know again i've used crypto.com i have in the past a little bit but they are going to launch retail trading services in south korea which is nice to see that it's just more adoption and global uh, digital asset exchange crypto.com is gearing up to launch retail trading services in south korea on april 29th the end of this month which is very very nice as well the move comes after crypto.com's acquisition of locally licensed crypto exchange okay bit in 2022 which is now winding down its services so again taking over just buying that license which a lot of people do anyway and bitcoin etf flows turn negative as q2 begins halving excitement ends i'm extremely freaking excited about this and uh cannot wait for it but 
still dollar cost averaging every single week. Bitcoin ETFs began Q2 or quarter two uh, with negative flows with huge selling in Bitcoin price. GBTC, GBTC or Grayscale in short, outflows surge past $300 million, again putting dent on over the inflows. They need to stop selling their freaking Bitcoin, Grayscale, thank you very much. And uh, the Fed faces an uphill monetary changes or challenges, sorry, with the chances of rate cuts diminishing. They're not going to cut rates until well into uh, the end of this year. And that's going to be the same here in Australia and pretty much around the world anyway. So let's see what happens in there. Uh, moving on, we have December Ethereum ETF launch will be better. Very, very interesting. A spot Ethereum ETF approval in May could not uh, generate enough interest as Bitcoin ETFs still hold public interest. In a shocking turn of events, Bitwise has called for spot Ethereum ETF's approval delay. And instead, the asset uh, firm, which recently submitted an amended filing Ethereum ETF on the 28th of March, prefers approval to be pushed to December this year. Probably not a bad idea when you think about that, because yes, there's a lot of you know hype still going on from these approvals that occurred on the 11th of January. But anyway, moving on. Bitcoin halving is uh, 16 days away. 23 hours, 43 minutes, and 38 seconds, which is going to be interesting, guys. I mean, the 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 mining rate is going to be hard from 900 Bitcoin per day to 450. That is definitely going to be causing a supply and demand issue, for sure. Crypto meter to I. Let's have a look here. I am going to refresh this and have a bit of sip of water because this coffee is just you know dehydrating, of course. Right, coming down to the buy flow. Let's see where the money's been going, bulls. We've got Ethereum, we've got Solana, Bitcoin, BNB. Not that I'm big on BNB anyway. Uh, AVAX, Shiba Inu, uh, BCH. We've got Litecoin, Sui, and XRP. Some gems, which again, I'm wanting to accumulate more of. That's very interesting. Let's go to X right now. And uh, thank you to those 6,349 people. You guys absolutely rock. Yes, that is me and Johnny Deaton. I have pinned that. And by the way, when I hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, I am still giving away the bull ring. All right, because we're all bullish, right? Moving on, yes, 143 million US dollars liquidated from the crypto market in the past 60 minutes alone, which is ridiculous. And my uh, maintenance margin has dropped down to 28%. So it needs to get back down to like, you know, 15, 17%. This is interesting. Why Ash Crypto? Thank you for this tweet. Really appreciate it. The Grayscale outflow. Grayscale had an outflow of $302 million along with a net outflow of Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, there is still some major GBT selling happening, GBTC, which is annoying. Excessive leverage because we're all greedy people. I'm not going to use uh, profanities. Anyway, whales always love liquidate high leverage longs and shorts. Right now, OI is the new highs along with the positive funding rate, which indicates that there are more longs than shorts. Totally agree with that. Pre-halving correction. This is standard. Bitcoin always goes down before the halving. And then the same thing is happening right now. And that macro factors as well. We're, you know, recently the negative correlation between Bitcoin and the 10-year treasury yield. Negative correlation has reached uh, 90%. And this means whenever the 10-year treasury yield is rising, Bitcoin is dropping. Interesting right there. Thank you very much, Ash Crypto. As much as Grayscale is annoying the shits out of me right now, but they are offering some incredible products right here. Exposure to Aave, Cardano, Atom, AVAX, Bitcoin, Basic Attention Token, Curve, Dot, Ethereum. Where is XRP? They do have XL in there, which is fascinating. And uh, anyway, we've got interesting though. MicroStrategy micro has purchased 2,911 uh, Ethereum for $10 million at an average price of $3,435. So they are adding Ethereum to MicroStrategy. Fascinating. And check this right out here. This is crazy. Bitcoin purchased by ETFs, 66,008 Bitcoin versus what's being mined, 28,513. That is going to be halved in 16 days. Let that one sink in as well. Have a quick listen to Pomp on CNBC last night. $70,000 right about now this month. Expected to bring the next Bitcoin halving in which the reward for mining cryptocurrencies drops by half. Joining us right now on All Things Crypto, Anthony Pompliano, a Pomp Investment founder, of course, and partner. Good morning to you. We, we were trying to figure out... Legend, by the way. On one end, it's like a risk-on situation. On the other, it's arguably supposed to be a hedge. And, and it's very hard for me to get around the idea that it's both, though yeah. maybe you have a view that it is. Then there was the having that's coming. So that's sort of an idiosyncratic 
one piece of the puzzle, but not something that's like an ongoing piece. So you could argue it is in certain ways. And then you have the ETF, which was also sort of an idiosyncratic moment in time. So sort of, so put that puzzle together for us. Yeah. Bitcoin is the most exciting asset in financial markets because of what you just described. It's this highly complex thing that everyone's trying to figure out. And I think for some people, it is a risk on asset. And for other people, it is a hedge against inflation or a store of value. And so if we just look at Can it data, be both? Of course, it can be different things to different people, right? Right now, I think what, one of the most interesting parts about this is if you go and you talk to someone on Wall Street, why are they buying it? They're buying it because they want the price exposure via the ETFs. But if you go and you talk to someone maybe in a country where they actually are worried about somebody seizing their assets, they're buying Bitcoin because they literally want to make sure that they can hold on to the economic value. And so you have an asset that this is not unique just to Bitcoin in the sense of some assets serve different purposes for different people. I think Bitcoin, because of its global nature, because of the decentralization, and because it was adopted by individuals before the institutions, we're just seeing it kind of uh, exaggerated um, as we watch the asset become adopted. Now, we just hit a really important milestone before the halving. We just had the highest weekly, monthly, and quarterly close for Bitcoin. Right. And so the last four times that that's happened, Bitcoin has appreciated at least 300% through the rest of the bull market. Right. Doesn't mean it's going to happen again, but to have that happen before the halving, it's kind of right. like the demand shock happened. Now we're going to have the supply shock. Right. And so it's hard just to see how the prices right. continue to go up. I want to ask you this question, and it goes to this, the risk on versus the inflation hedge. So I just got back from uh, South Africa, mm -hmm. and I literally asked everybody who was around. When I was in Zimbabwe, in Zambia, by the way, the, the RAND has done terribly. It's right? it been infl inflated away. Horrific situation. And I would ask anybody who was around, uh, very wealthy people, uh, uh, folk, folks who are middle class, uh, folks who are at the bottom, of this, and I said, do you own any Bitcoin? Yeah. Almost to a T, they said no, that, that that actually was not a thing. And this was, and by the way, this was, I mean, it wasn't a scientific study, but a lot of people I asked about Bitcoin, because yeah. I thought that the conversation we have around this table is that mm -hmm. somehow the unbanked and everybody who's in these countries that uh, is, is struggling with inflation is buying Bitcoin. Yeah. And they're, at least from what I saw, they're not. And when, then I went to look at the flows, and it also is true that they're not. Yeah, the, the math does not suggest that the hedge argument on inflation is actually a real one. And I just wonder whether it's sort of used to sort of sprinkle fairy dust to other people who then are speculating. I think there's a lot of people out there that are speculating and want it obviously to go higher. And, and it's a risk on asset. That's that's my take on it at the moment. Yeah. So I, I think it depends on what country you go look at. And I'll give you kind of two examples, one that supports yours and one that uh, would contradict it. If you go to somewhere like Nigeria, it's definitely true that people are buying Bitcoin. And, and I don't know why it's happening in Nigeria, not in South Africa, but, but we see that. But then if you go somewhere like Argentina, there are some people buying Bitcoin, but there's a lot of people who want dollar backed uh, stable coins. And they actually want the dollar, not Bitcoin. And so I think country by country, you're going to different adoption of these technologies. Now, what I will say, though, is you don't have to go to emerging markets to find a reason why people want to buy this, right? If you look at the United States dollar, it's lost 25% of its purchasing power since 2020. Bitcoin is up 800% during that same time period. And so if we go back to 2020, if you remember, Paul Tudor Jones, Stanley Druckenmiller, many of these people came out and said, look, I think it's an inflation hedge. Now, hedges are always this weird thing where people expect you buy it and then inflation explodes the next day. But instead, what we've seen is that Bitcoin is a free market asset that trades forward looking. And so Bitcoin's rise, it's up. We have seven straight months of Bitcoin in the green uh, up till this past month. And so why is it going up? And Some of it is the ETF. Well, inflation is coming down year over year, but it's actually, but inflation is actually but going a, up month right. over month. It's anticipating the next, e the next easing cycle. That's what uh, it's uh, anticipating. So you could argue, one, it is anticipating the next easing cycle. You could also argue the alarm bell is going off, and actually inflation is not coming down month over month. It's going up, and people see that, and they're buying Bitcoin. And so Bitcoin going up is telling us, wait a second, inflation is a bigger problem than we actually thought. During the high case. I don't know what it is with these CNBC hosts. I, just, I can't remember his name. Is it Andrew or whatever his name is? But anyway, he hates Bitcoin. He literally hates it. Anyway, um, that is pretty much it for today, guys. I'm going to head off. But uh, make sure you join the Wall Street Bull University. It's linked below. It's an incredible community. Thank you, guys, for those of you who have actually joined. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens tonight. I'm currently watching at the moment, guys, what's going on in the market. And uh, hopefully this flash crash that occurred today recovers later on when the market actually opens anyway 
I'm out of here. Make sure you have a good night, a good afternoon, and a good morning wherever you are in the world. And if it's morning, have an espresso. All right, guys, I'll speak to everyone tomorrow. Peace out, balls. Bye.